Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. This week on the Sweetwater Minute, we've turned my office here at Sweetwater into a complete Pro Tools studio. We've got some pretty sophisticated things happening here, some new developments in Pro Tools land. And we are joined by Rob McGay from Avid, the channel sales manager from Avid, who works here with us at Sweetwater. And we're going to talk about some of the things we have going on. So Rob, one of the things with Pro Tools when you move to the HD Native or the HDX platform is you pretty much have had to have a tower computer in order to run that. But what you've actually got running here is Pro Tools Native, HD Native, yet you've got it running on a laptop. Can you tell us how this is all working and what, the, what pieces are required to make that happen? Sure, sure. Um, we have the new Sonnet uh, Echo Express SE Thunderbolt chassis, which actually connects via Thunderbolt to the uh, Thunderbolt uh, port on our MacBook Pro with Retina display, the brand, brand new one here. So that allows us to take the HD Native PCIe card, put it inside the Echo Express SE expansion chassis, and then it Pro Tools, the computer sees it as it would in, a, in a, a desktop computer. So it's just the same as if you had the HD Native card mounted into a PCIe slot inside a tower, just we're connecting by Thunderbolt. Now, is there any performance difference when you do that? No, actually it works, it works quite well. Right. And then with the new Retina display MacBooks, those are incredibly powerful. You're really talking yeah. about just about the same power as a, uh, as a tower would have. Yeah, it's a very powerful i7 computer. I put 16 gigs of RAM in it. it it's a great uh, audio production machine. Right. And because you have a solid state drive, it's also very quiet. Very quiet and very fast to right. load things and streaming samples and loading VIs and stuff like that is, is great from the solid state drive. Right. Mm. Right. So for a portable rig, we could really have the laptop, the uh, chassis that has the, uh, the card in it, Right. and an interface, and yep. you'd be good to go. Now, we've kind of tricked this out here. We've got some other right. accessories plugged in. Let's talk about some of this, because there are some interesting things you run into when you want to connect this many peripherals to a MacBook Pro, because the ports have changed. Well, there's not, <laughs> there's not that many. There's not that many, first yeah, of all, right? Yeah, yeah. Right, and they've changed, right? There's no FireWire anymore. Right. So we've got two Thunderbolt ports. Mm -hmm. We've got two USB 3 ports. Correct. We've got an HDMI output. Right. And then, of course, the power connector. Yep. And that's pretty much what we have at this point, right? Yep. So how, then, are you connecting the artist control, which uses a, a Cat5 cable right. or an RJ45 connector? How are you right. getting that into the MacBook? There's actually a, an Apple makes a Thunderbolt to RJ45 adapter cable that connects to the second Thunderbolt port here that allows us to come out to the, the artist uh, mix control service. If we had multiple of these, we could add a, uh, a router and be able to distribute out to, to multiple devices. You just keep changing yeah. them that way. So you could have up to four of these, and artist control and transport and color and all the different uh, pieces and parts. Right. So yeah. Right. So you've got one Thunderbolt port is connected to the chassis. Right. One Thunderbolt port is being converted to RJ45 for the right. artist control. Mm -hmm. And how do we have the monitor hooked up? Via HDMI. Okay, yeah, so it's it's HDMI. HDMI out to DVI. In right, or if you had an HDMI monitor, we could hook it up that way. Or yeah, whatever your monitor is, right. Way. Right. Now, you've also got some things going on with USB because the ports on that are USB 3. That's correct. So what does that allow? Well, the way I like to work is I like to have a, a drive for my Pro Tools sessions and a separate one for uh, samples, loop libraries, uh, impulse responses, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So I have two different drives. I connect one directly to one of the USB 3 ports on the computer and I have the other USB 3 port co connected to the uh, this uh, SIG USB 3 hub, and that connects the other USB 3 drive along with my iLock, keyboard, 11 rack, other USB devices. So it's actually right. a, you know three USB 3 ports plus four USB 2 ports. So it supports both, but it's connected to USB 3 on the computer, right? Which can handle all that bandwidth. Right, and the drive connects via USB 3, which mm -hmm. which is nice. I'm assuming your session drive is the one you have hooked up directly to the computer Correct. by USB 3, and that has also your audio files, right. all your tracks and everything are on that. Right. Now, are there any limitations there versus having an internal drive inside a tower computer, or are you getting about the same performance there as well? You know, these drives actually are the SATA drives that came out of my tower, my Mac mm -hmm. Pro tower. So I pulled those SATA, you know, so one terabyte SATA drives, and put them in these USB 3 enclosures. So that allowed me to connect it to this rig, and I just pulled them out of one into the other, and it was good to go. Pretty much tra a seamless transition then, yeah, as far as the sessions go? completely, yeah. It took right. f five minutes to hook it all up and go, you know. Right, right. Now you could also, of course, be working to the internal drive. Yeah. But generally, we like to have our sessions and things on a separate drive. And yeah. it is nice to have your libraries on another drive as well, so you can access those and not be using that bandwidth. Yeah. So that's the reason you've done that that way with the hub. Yeah, that's right. correct. But if you want it to be totally portable, again, the chassis, the interface, and the computer, and you're good to go. You could. You know, I would worry about potentially, you know, fragmenting your internal drive mm -hmm. and... Uh, 
It's um, not ideal. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, in a perfect world, I think it would be, it would be nice to have a, a second drive for, for Pro Tools sessions, but right. it is possible to record an internal drive. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Now, you actually have two interfaces here. Are both of those connected to Pro Tools? How do you have that set up? Uh, this is the HD Omni, the Avid HD Omni interface, which is connected via the DigiLink to the uh, HD native card. I can actually connect up to four different, you know, this family interfaces. So it, it can support up to a total of 64 ins and 64 outs simultaneous. Uh -huh. uh, the 11 rack is connected via USB, and then I've got it connected digitally to the HD Omni. So I've just got a spit if in and out between the two. And then I can also take analog out of this into this as well. So it gives me the ability to plug a guitar in, record it, reamp it, you know, do all the things I can do with an 11 rack. Right. Have the USB control of 11 rack from my Pro Tools screen, but the audio is just like an external processor. Right, right. So it's a cool way to do it because as a guitar player, then you have all the great features from the 11 rack. Yep. And yet when you want to plug microphones in, when you're mixing right. down, you want to run your monitors, all those things are coming through the, uh, the Omni. Right. Now you do have to have an interface, an HD series interface connected. You can't just yes. run the chassis with the card. You have to have that, that you interface. You have to have in. an interface, at least one. Yeah. Right, and it could be this, it could be an 8x8x8, it could be a 16x16, whichever one you want to yeah. choose, or Romatic. multiples that yeah. you wanted to, uh, to choose. Um, and again, you could have a rig like this that had the interface in a rack, right. take it with you portable, come home and just plug into your, uh, your system at home that has a, sure. a rack-based uh, uh, interfaces or things that you aren't necessarily taking out. So if yep. you want to build a home studio like this that's more tricked out, Mm -hmm. then you can have this type of stuff with multiple interfaces and things and still have that portability of picking up the uh, laptop, your uh, interface, and go. Yeah, I mean, the beauty of this is you take you know, your laptop and a bag and drives and put it all together, and you can literally carry the whole thing and pull a rack of, you know, of interfaces behind you. Right. And you can carry the whole system with you. Right. Try you, doing that with a Mac Pro, you know. Yeah, right, right, right. A little <laughs> yeah, more difficult when you got sure. a tower computer and all that. Right. When well, you have the extra monitor, you don't have to have that, but it sure is nice, especially with these yeah. HD monitors, because you can spread out and get so many channels across. Awesome. It's a yeah. great display to work with for your mixer. You've got the mixer here and your edit window over here. Right. Uh, you could, of course, do that however you wanted, but nice yeah. way to be able to do that as well. Yeah, I actually find that you know when I use the Artist Series mixers, I, I tend to not need the mix window much, so I, I'll put the uh, the edit window spread out across the big display, and I'll take plugins and things like that and have them open up on the MacBook display. So it's cool. I can be kind of working on this display, but I open up a plugin, I get to the GUI or any you know ancillary windows and things like that show up. Right, it's, it's not like covering up your, uh, your edits that you're making. Right, you're yeah, it's all right there in yeah. front of me, so yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah. So this is actually, it, 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 uh, it's quite a step forward because we've never really been able to go totally portable with an HD rig before whether it was native or not, HD or HDX, yeah, not because like you this. had to have a tower computer, right. and it was just a much more difficult thing to move all that around, a separate, yeah. a separate computer keyboard, all those things. That Display, you have to have all those pieces and parts, yep. Right, so this is really a big leap forward. It's something that yeah. you've actually kind of been working on putting together here, the people at Avid, and yeah. it's something where we have all these parts here at Sweetwater. Yeah, this, this is available today. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. yeah. We, I mean, we, whatever configuration you want, not necessarily this one, but if you want yeah. that chassis, and, and, or if right. you have a Pro Tools system already, and a MacBook Pro, Picking yeah. up the chassis will let you uh, do what we're talking about here. A couple yeah. of adapters and you're good to go. Yeah, I mean, in the process of putting this together, we kind of learned some things. You know, one of the things we found out is we were taking USB 2 drives and connecting them to the computer, and we were finding uh, some difficulty in getting them to mount, or sometimes they'd mount and they wouldn't unmount, or they'd fall offline, and, and they weren't working well. And searching around, it seemed like others were having you know, similar issues with, with USB 2. Mm -hmm. But when we went to the USB 3, they were, they were rock solid. They really Took worked well. well. They performed just exactly why you want. It's a very, very fast, high bandwidth protocol. Right. So it works well there. So that's where we start looking for, you know, okay, we need more ports. So we found this, this hub, which right. we've tested and works, works really well. Um, you know, so we, we, that's kind of the story behind finding these particular chassis and finding those was kind of just to, to meet the need. All the stuff that works. With, so it's yeah. kind of a, a key to have the right hub yeah. that will let you do both the USB 3 and the USB 2. Right. So that you can have the different, uh, this, this device hooked up as well as the hard drives and still get that performance. Yeah. So there's a couple of key components here then, a USB right. 3, USB 2 hub, yep. the chassis, yep. and then USB 3 drives. Yep. Or what you'd recommend for that as well. Yeah, the, the USB 3 enclosures with just SATA, you know, and things in time. And they've become, they're very affordable these days. And when you look at the, the cost of media for one or two terabyte right. SATA drives inside of one of these enclosures, it's like, wow. Go back to the days of tape and stuff like that. Uh, it's uh, yeah. yeah, a little bit different. <laughs> a whole in those different days. world, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Now you don't have to have the artist control, so you wouldn't necessarily have to have the adapter to RJ45. But if you want to do that, which of course is an awesome option to have that. Right. That adapter is also critical at that point. 
Right. They yeah. also make a Thunderbolt to FireWire adapter, Apple does. Okay. So you could, there's one extra port back here. There's a, a second Thunderbolt port on the back of the Echo Express SE. So you could put there the, uh, the FireWire adapter and then connect FireWire 400 or 800 uh, d drives as well. Rob, thanks so much for coming in and showing this to us. It's really very exciting. The whole idea of being able to go portable with HD is, is pretty darn incredible. And with a compact system like this, it still has all these features. Pack it up in the back seat of your car and you're ready to go. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. People have been asking about this for a long time, and it's finally real. I mean, you can, you can do this today, and it, uh, right. it's been a long time coming. So. Right. Awesome. Thanks again. appreciate it. You're welcome. I'm Mitch Gallagher. Thanks for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute.